Hello, everyone, and welcome to this special edition of Police Off the Cuff. This is a special edition for our YouTube and our Patreon members. And you know, a lot of people, they hear me say, introduce my co-host as straight out of Brooklyn, Phil Grimaldi. And we play it up that he's Italian. And that's true, he is Italian. And with that ancestry of being Italian comes some great cooking. And I thought, why not use Phil to teach you guys, some of our guests, how to make some Italian sauce? Or pff, you might want to call it gravy. That'll be an argument we have later on. Anyway, I'm going to introduce Phil, and he's going to show us some of his tricks for making the perfect sauce, I mean gravy, for your household. Hey, Philly, what's going on? Good to see How you. How are you, pal? Great, man. I, you know, this is really our first, like, little recording we're going to do for our uh, Patreon uh, folks and our YouTube uh, channel members. And I think they'll, they'll, they're going to really like this. I think so, because we're going to be stirring the sauce. <laughs> stirring the pot. That's <laughs> it. And there it is right there. There's the pot. Oh, my Ready God. He's really got it on the stove. He's right. I thought, I envisioned your pot like it's almost like a, a small swimming pool and the and the stir like an oar, like the size of an oar. Well, that's the we break out the vat for the special big occasion holidays. That's when we break out the vat. That's like the standard Sunday sauce pot. It looks a little smaller than it really is. It's actually a pretty big pot. But uh I want to get to one thing though, Billy. There's a big discussion about whether we call it sauce or gravy. Now, where I come from in Brooklyn, my mother always had, uh, she called it sauce. Now, the only time she called it gravy is when she made a special occasion sauce where she threw meatballs, sausage, brajol. You like brajol, Billy? Because I love brajol. It's nothing like it. And in a typical Sunday sauce, that's what you'll put in there. But when she made a quick sauce, let's say a marinara, that was just tomato sauce and you'd throw a quick over macaroni. We always refer to that as sauce, but when it was a, a pot with a lot of meat in it, we would call that a gravy because it'd be stewing for a long time and all the flavors from the bones of the pork spare ribs and the meat, you, uh, meatballs, you, you had uh, three different kinds of meat going the meatballs, and then you had sausage and you had the brajol. So that's like a typical Sunday sauce. We would really refer to that as a gravy, but a lot of people call it sauce. So I guess it could be both. You know, Philly, that reminds me of the Godfather when uh, the the, uh, the, the part that was played by uh, what's it, Richard Castellucci, I think was his name. Yes, he was Clement. telling he was telling Michael, "Hey, you want to learn something? You ever got to cook for a lot of guys?" He goes, "Let me show you." Hey, you take your <laughs> and he's teaching him how to make the sauce. That's that's sort of funny, you know, like uh, memorialized in a movie how to how to make spaghetti sauce, right? Yeah, that, that was actually pretty uh, pretty on key, too. Now, you know, my wife is uh, w w was born and raised in Brooklyn and right in the heart of Bensonhurst, so she got a lot of Sicilian influence when she does the sauce. Her and my mother-in-law, they're both great cooks. And my mother's side of the family was Sicilian, so we had a, a big Sicilian influence on what we ate. Now, when you start out to do your sauce, the most important thing is that you have the right ingredients. Now... Right here, I have a can of San Marzano tomatoes. If you use a San Marzano, this is a whole tomato in, so, in, in some uh, liquid sauce. Now, when you do this, what you want to do is, and in the movie, The Godfather, Clemenza, he grabs it, he sticks his hand in it, and he pulls out the tomatoes, and he kind of squeezes them. That's the old way of doing it. My wife will just throw it quick into the blender, spin it up a little bit just to chop it up a little bit. But uh, that's one of the things. Now, when you start your sauce... You're always going to want to start with some olive oil. Now, this is extra virgin olive oil. Not necessarily. Extra virgin's good. Uh, Rachel Ray calls it EV, uh, uh, EVO, extra virgin olive oil, EVOO. You could use regular olive oil when you're starting a sauce because you're just going to fry up some onions, maybe a little garlic in there, and you're just going to try and get that stuff brown before you add the tomato sauce. I tell you, Philly, when you use a lot of olive oil, that stuff's expensive. Oh, oh, yeah, the, the good stuff. The, the yeah, it's really oh, expensive. I think what you showed, that's like 20 bucks for a bottle of that. Oh, yeah. easy. And then there's different uh, variations of it, too. There's the first cold press, which is like the best one. When they, when, they, when they press the olives, they put it in a press. And the first press 
that's when you get like, that's considered the extra virgin olive oil. And then the second and third presses become, you know, a secondary to that and third, I guess. But, uh, you know, it, it, there's like a funny story with, now you always bring up veal cutlet parmesan that I like veal cutlet parmesan. That's actually my favorite meal. My wife makes it for me every year on my birthday. My mother used to make it when she was alive. And that's like my favorite thing. But I got a quick baseball story. So I'm on a, a baseball team when I'm about 12 years old. We were the Warriors from St. Simon and Jude's League. And we used to play in a park right on Stool Avenue in Brooklyn. Everybody from Brooklyn's going to know it was called Shady Park. It was surrounded by trees. So it was always shady in the park. Anyhow, we were the worst team in the league. We had like... Uh, uh, zero wins and like 11 losses. It was a 12 game season. So it's the last game of the season. We're down like two nothing. And it's like the bottom of the seventh inning, which was only a seven inning game. So my mother shows up at the, uh, at the game and uh, you know, I'm waiting to get up at bat There's like one or two outs. And there was another kid that was in the on deck circle right next to me. So she comes over and she goes, what's going on? I said, ma, we're losing two to nothing. She goes, come on, you got to hit a home run, win the game. When you get up at bat, I want, I want you to hit a home run. Now, Shady Park, if uh, people that know it, the, the, the right field fence was probably four or 500 feet out. So in Little League, nobody was hitting a home run. All you had to do was get it over the outfielder's head, and you had a home run. Because by the time you went around the bases, you could stop on second base, have a cup of coffee and a piece of cake, and still <laughs> make it to home plate by the time the guy got the ball into home plate. Anyways, so she's telling me, come on, you got to hit a home run. I says, mom, I'm really nervous, you know? So the kid, the kid next to me, it's waiting in the on deck circle. His father was there and he was Italian from the other side. And he's kind of listening. She says, listen, when you get up at bat, just take a nice deep breath. She goes, and I got a whole pot of gravy at home. What's your favorite? Veal cutlet parmesan. <laughs> so I take a deep breath and I look over and the kid that's going up at bat next, you know, before me, his father was an Italian guy from the other side. He goes, come on. He goes, you got to get a hit. You didn't get a hit all year. And the kid was chewing gum. He smacks him in the face. He goes, what's the matter with you? Spit out the gum. Come on, you got to get a hit. Long story short, he gets on base. The bases are loaded. I get up at bat. I look over at my mother. I take a deep breath. First pitch right over the plate. Boom. I put it between left and center field into the outfield. Home run, grand slam. We won the game, and I had my veal parmesan. And it was all close <laughs> to my mother. I, I blame it on the veal parmesan. I don't know if it was the deep breath, but the veal parmesan was waiting when I got That home. was it, man. That was the motivation. That veal parmesan made yep, you hit that home exactly. run. Exactly. <laughs> So anyhow, getting back to the sauce. So what you want to do is you want to take some olive oil, put it in the pan. See that pot right there? You would start with a pot like that. Now I'm going to talk about a traditional uh, Sunday afternoon gravy. So you, you put a little olive oil in the bottom. You chop up some fresh onion. We got the onions here. Not red onions. You use a white onion for that. If you want to put some garlic, some people do, some people don't. We got some fresh garlic. Now, there's a big controversy going on with garlic right now in the last year or two. My mother-in-law grabbed me about two years ago. There's no more garlic from China. They're bleaching it or something like that. It's got to be from the USA. So this garlic is actually organic from Whole Foods, 100% USA. You no, know, Phil, sometimes some places, like you go to some restaurants, and they can kill you with garlic. They use too much. You yeah, know? You're right about that, Billy. I'm glad you brought that up because that's really a great point. A lot of times they cut the garlic, they peel it ahead of time, and it goes rancid. Garlic should be, you keep it in this form, and what you do is you peel it a little bit, and when you smash it, it releases a lot of different, uh, believe it or not, antioxidants. I don't know if it changes the molecular structure of the garlic, but- Oh, this is getting technical. This is way more technical than I thought it was going to be. I, I knew it would be, <laughs> but listen, I the have- science of sauce with Phil that, Grimaldi. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Now, in the movie Goodfellas, you brought up the Godfather, but in the movie Goodfellas, they talk about how uh, Paul Sorvino's character, um, oh, geez, Big Paulie. Paulie. Big oh, yeah. uh, he would slice it with a razor blade, the garlic, and let it melt into whatever it was they were cooking. Now, that's a good idea if you're cooking certain dishes. I don't think that's so good if you're going to do a sauce or something like that, although maybe that'll work. You want to get the flavor in there. But I know uh, when my mother did garlic or my wife, my, my mother-in-law, they would smash it, just throw it right into the pan. My wife uses a great technique when she cooks chicken cutlets. She fries them in olive oil, and she takes three or four cloves of garlic. She smashes it, even with the skin on, a little bit of the skin, throws it in the pan, and then the oil takes on the essence of garlic. So when you're cooking those cutlets, wow, 
fantastic. They're just great. But uh, yeah, so you can put a little garlic, a little olive oil, you fry it up, maybe a little bit of parsley, chop up some parsley. You throw that into the uh, into the pot. Once it's brown, you open up your can of tomatoes, like I said, you half a little bit in the blender, just a couple of quick spins in the blender just to chop up some of those whole tomatoes. You throw that in, you bring it to a boil. Now, if you add in a lot of meat, like you're going to put brajol and sausage and meatballs and all of that, you would take like the brajol and the sausage and you would just braise it in the pot before you add the sauce. Take it out, put it on the side. Once you got the sauce in there and you're bringing it to a boil, you add all your meat. And then once it's boiling a little bit, you let it simmer. Now, when you let it simmer, my wife always puts in like a tablespoon of sugar. And then where do we have it here? A little splash of the red vino. Always gives a nice flavor to the sauce. <laughs> now, Philly, um, wait, who's in charge of your kitchen? You or your wife? Who's in charge? Oh, she's in charge of the kitchen. I'm lucky I can boil water, but I know how to make sauce. That I can make. I can make sauce pretty good if I had to. Like, if God forbid something happens and she has to go away on a trip or something like that, I'll get by on uh, sauce and macaroni for sure. All right. One of the other things that uh, I wanted to talk about is meatballs. Meatballs are very important in this family. Now, we have a variation of meatballs, but, you know, you're going to start with your chopped meat. Now, there's a pork store by me. It's called Tuscany Italian Specialty. Wait, it's, it's not Satrials? No, Satrials, that's north of here. So, <laughs> but, uh, but I got Tuscany, and I got some really great people that work yeah. there. The owner is Kim and his mom, uh, and they're really beautiful people. And when we go in there on a, on a Sunday to buy the meat or a Saturday, whatever it is, they have a thing called the Three Stooges. It's ground beef, pork, and veal. Now, when you want to make real Sicilian meatballs, that's the kind of meat you want to use. So we'll get some of that. And my wife will throw in some breadcrumbs. Now, this is panko. But my mother always used four-season flavored breadcrumbs. This says panko. We also have these, which are regular breadcrumbs. She uses the, the panko for the, for the chicken cutlets. But in meatballs, you want to use this. Now, you don't want to put too much breadcrumb in your meatballs. But then you, <laughs> you wind don't up want the meatball weighing two pounds. <laughs> no, not only that, you wind up with breadcrumb balls. And, and a lot of the restaurants do that. And they become, you could, you could throw them through a window and break a window. We don't want yeah. that. We want meatballs that have a little bit of the flavor of breadcrumb. But also, very, very important in meatballs. You're going to want grated cheese. Now, this jar, we, we, it's a different jar, but we use it for the grated cheese. You want a, a lot of grated cheese because grated cheese is a little salty. It's got the flavor. It really makes the meatballs. Now, when you're putting breadcrumbs and grated cheese in meatballs, you don't need any salt. When you're doing your salt, you want to add a little salt and pepper. That's fine. But with your meatballs, you don't want them too salty. Now, here's another thing. Sicilian meatballs have raisins in them and pignoli nuts. I don't have the pignoli nuts here, but... My wife, my my father-in-law loves the raisins and the pignoli nuts and the meatball. My m wife makes it from there. We're here yesterday. We had it. He said, Millie outdid yourself. He really, really enjoyed the meatballs. Those are real Sicilian meatballs. Now, occasionally when you're doing a sauce, let's say you're doing a quick sauce. You just got meatballs in there and it's simmering, but it's kind of loose. It's a little bit, you know, you might add a little too much water when you rinse out the can. So you'll use a little bit of tomato paste. Tomato paste it's not really uh, something that you want to add a lot of because it could be a little on the bitter side. It's it's the paste of the tomatoes, and it's for thickening the sauce. So if the sauce is a little bit watery, you want to just make it a little thicker so that when you ladle it onto the pasta, it sticks to the pasta nice. It's not accumulating at the bottom of the bowl. You want it mixed in with the pasta, clinging to the macaronis. You add a little paste. That's not where the expression comes from. Make it nice. Make it nice. Say it again. <laughs> I said, that's where that expression comes from. Make it nice. Make yeah, it nice. make it nice. Make it very nice. <laughs> and then, of course, you'll be stirring the sauce every one, once in a while. Now, when you're simmering your sauce, you bring it to a boil, then you lower the heat down, you let it simmer, and you keep the, the cover on, but you let it where a little bit of the, the steam can, can escape. But you don't want it to escape too much because then it, it'll, it'll reduce down and you can burn the sauce. And there's nothing worse than a burnt sauce. If you burn the sauce on the bottom, no good. Throw it out, start over. It's no good. But that's you true. want to stir it, keep it going. What was that, Billy? Go ahead. I said that's true. If you burn the sauce, oh, you're yeah. defeating your whole purpose. You defeat the whole purpose. Now, you want your sauce to be nice and red. You don't want it to be brown. When it's brown, that means you burnt it. It's no good. Throw it out. Start over. You know what I mean? Because that's not, <laughs> that's not, a, that's not going to be a good sauce. If it burns, 
It's no good. It defeats its own purpose. There we, we got a little, a little, uh, a little. Uh, uh, the moon from, uh, hits the sky like a big pizza pie. That's somebody. That, that's actually a line from uh, Raging Bull when he's talking <laughs> about the steak. You, 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 you overcook it. It's no good. It defeats its own purpose. It Bring, its it own purpose. Bring it over. Bring it over. And then next thing you know, the table goes flying in the air. <laughs> That's great. That was one of Robert De Niro's uh, better acting roles. He was great in that. <laughs> yeah, he was really good in that. So anyhow, we got the sauce going. Uh, I got a little sausage over here just to show everybody. This is Italian link sausage with the fennel in it. If you're throwing the sausages into a sauce, you're going to want to braise them. Like I said, when you're doing the onions and garlic and the parsley with the olive oil, you throw the sausages in there, let them a little brown, move them around a little bit. You take them out. Same with the meatballs. My wife fries the meatballs in a separate pan, just a little bit of olive oil. She throws them around, rolls them a little bit. They get brown. Then they're taken out. They're put on the side. Once you got your sauce rolling, it's coming to a boil. You add all your meats. Again, you bring it down to heat. You let it simmer for at least a good two hours on a low heat. The longer it cooks, the better it's going to taste. It just takes on the flavors of all the meat and all the ingredients that you put in there, those fresh herbs, the garlic, the parsley, the onion, all of that's going to make a beautiful flavor on the sauce. And you're going to have a, uh, a wonderful Sunday afternoon, as they say. Man, Philly, that's a, uh, I didn't know being an Irish guy, that sauce is that involved. You have that many ingredients in it, but I think if, People follow your directions and, and make it the way you said, and they can play this video back and forth to find out what you were saying. I think they're going to have an amazing sauce. Absolutely, Billy. And listen, and there's a lot of things that I brought out that, you know, somebody might not like uh, having garlic in their sauce. Now, my wife doesn't use garlic when she fries in the beginning. She uses just some chopped onion and parsley. She browns that. Again, when she makes the meatballs, now I didn't give you the, all the ingredients in the meatballs. In the meatballs, you're going to want to start out with your three stooges, your, your ground veal, your ground pork, and your ground beef. And you put that in a, in a bowl. You're going to add an egg. You're going to add some breadcrumbs, some grated cheese. And then my wife takes onions and parsley and fries it with a little bit of olive oil, makes it nice and brown. She throws that in. Then if you like the real Sicilian style, you add your raisins and you add your pignoli nuts, you mush it all together with your hands, and you make some balls, and then you'll fry that. You put it on the side, and when the sauce is boiling, that'll go into the sauce. Now, you don't have to go through all of this hassle if you just want a quick sauce. We call in Italian, a quick sauce is a marinara sauce. My mother used to do that on the frying pan, on the stove, olive oil, just maybe some garlic and parsley and a little bit of onion, brown that, throw in the tomatoes, Add maybe a little bit of oregano, bring it to a boil. It cooks quick. It's a half an hour sauce, and you just throw that over macaroni. That's your quick sauce. If you want, you could add some maybe some vegetables or something if it's the summertime. But then there's another sauce that my wife loves to make. It's called a bolognese sauce. Now, that bolognese sauce, that's pretty involved because you're going to take Bill, we'll, we'll have to do another video on the bolognese sauce. It, it, it's real quick. It's just got right. some carrots and some celery and, and the meat and stuff, but it does take a much longer time. You add a little cream to it. That takes a much longer time to cook. Uh, that That's over like a two or three hour sauce, but I tell you, that's a real delicious sauce, the bolognese. <laughs> that's amazing. Folks, this has been Police Off the Cuff, a special edition with Phil Grimaldi straight out of Brooklyn teaching us how to make his special sauce, gravy, whatever you want to call it. Philly, thank you so much. Uh, great to see you. And this is for our Patreon and our YouTube family. Thank you. Take care, Billy. Anytime. My pleasure. And keep stirring the sauce, people. Stir the sauce. Stir that pot. <laughs>